Hello, and thank you for exploring Lakehead International's videos. My name is Jordan, and I am the International New and Social Media Officer. I'm also the host of the Lakehead International Live Series, a fun and informative way for you to connect with current international students, professors, and ask questions about admissions and everything Lakehead. You are about to watch a recording from one of our previous live sessions. If any questions arise throughout the video, please do not hesitate to comment below. If you would like to check out some of our upcoming live sessions, please head over to our website at lakeheadu.ca forward slash international dash live. Let's begin. Hello and welcome to another Lakehead International Live. My name is Jordan, I'll be your host today. I'm joined by several special guests and we'll introduce them in, in just a second. But first I'll chat about what we're joined together here today to learn more about and ask our questions. We're going to be chatting all about careers, co-op, and employments here at Lakehead University. So that does include both the supports and services that are accessible to our students, but also the benefits of, of joining an institution with he, us here in Canada. And of course, all the opportunities that you'll have as a future student here at Lakehead University. Like I said, my name is Jordan. I am the International New and Social Media Officer here at Lakehead University. I help run our social media channels, our digital marketing, um, our Global Ambassador Program, and plenty more. Um, and I'm really happy to be here to answer your questions and help guide this session. Next, I'll pass over to Patrick to introduce himself. Good morning, Jordan, and good afternoon and good evening to our students abroad. My name is Patrick Carr. Uh, I am one of the many international recruitment officers here at Lakehead University, and I'm happy to be here today to answer any Lakehead-related questions you might have um, outside of our careers in co-op and employment special presentation. So thank you for having me today, and I'm excited to get going. Awesome. And we'll pass it over to Kristen next. Hi guys, uh, thanks for having me. So my name is Kristen Bahonis and I'm the Career Zone Coordinator for Lakehead University. Um, so my job is anything to do with careers, uh, career supports, things like that for students. So I'm happy to answer any questions that you guys have on, on career services at Lakehead. Awesome, we're excited to learn more for sure. And next I'll pass it over to Megan. Hi everyone, good morning. My name is Megan Schwetz. I'm the Cooperative Education Program Coordinator at Lakehead University. So I do a lot of the administrative work for the co-op program and I work alongside faculty um, to administer the co-op program for students. So I'm happy to be here and answer questions uh, that you may have in terms of the co-op program. Awesome, and we will be joined shortly with a current mechanical engineering student here at Lakehead University who actually just recently completed a co-op, Donguk, uh, will be joining us. And again, their fourth year uh, chemical or mechanical engineering student, pardon me. So before we dive into things and we actually get into today's uh, content, we'll chat a bit about our agenda. So we're gonna go into upcoming events within the Lakehead International Live Series. We're going to chat briefly about employment in Canada and why choosing an institution within Canada for your post-secondary education is so important. And then we'll chat about the career zone, networking opportunities and programs, events and workshops hosted on our Lakehead University campuses, as well as the cooperative education program, of course. All at the end of today's session, we will be answering your questions live. If you're sending in questions in the Q&A um, or the chat, we'll also be answering throughout today's session. So upcoming in the Academics Explored series is our in-depth session with biology. So that's going to be this Wednesday, March 31st at 9 a.m. So we'll be, at, we'll be joined by one of the chairs from the program itself. And we'll learn lots more about that program and the first year experience for both undergraduate and graduate students. Following that, we'll be chatting with economics, nursing, and psychology. So those are some of the sessions uh, that you can look forward to. You can also register for those online now at lakehead.ca forward slash international dash live. Other events that you can look forward to include included in the Lakehead Explorer series uh, involve the applying for your student visa. So that's going to be next week. Instead of Monday, we'll be closed. The whole university is closed on Monday for a holiday. Uh, we'll be joined together on Tuesday, April 6th at 9 a.m. with our immigration specialist, Jennifer Hay, and she'll be chatting about uh, immigrating to Canada as well as all that journey of applying for that student visa. And then of course, if we would like, if, if you are interested in a co-op potentially, uh, you can certainly ask Jen some questions about co-op next week and securing that study permit. 
And last but not least, we'll also have a getting involved in student life. And that will be not Monday, March um, 22nd, I believe that says. I have my camera in the way there. It's not Monday, March 29th. That is going to be hosted on April 12th. Monday, April 12th. We'll be chatting all about student life here at Lakewood University. Following that, we have sessions including student supports, residence and dining, meeting your future advisors, as well as a student panel and chatting about other students' journey to Lakehead. Again, you can register for some of those sessions online now at lakehead.ca forward slash international dash live. And so with that being said, we'll chat a bit about uh, things to remember, some of my housekeeping notes for today's presentation. If you like what you see, don't worry, we are recording today's session and we will upload it after the fact for you to learn more about uh, co-op careers and employment. If you do have any questions, we encourage you to use the Q&A function on Zoom. It helps us keep everything organized. It keeps every question in one place. Um, and then we can also follow up with you after the fact. And last but not least, I encourage you to stay connected with us. Follow us on our social media channels. You can find us at Lakehead International, both on Facebook and Instagram. I have the pleasure of running those channels and I do my best to give you an insider sneak peek in Lakehead University, but I also give you the regular updates about upcoming events that you can participate in, upcoming um, opportunities that you might want to partake in, all that sort of stuff. So I really encourage you to follow us over there. Without further ado, though, we're going to chat a bit about employment. Uh, I'll work with Patrick on this one, and we'll chat about the benefits of studying in Canada and what that comes along with. Uh, and then we'll dive into the actual supports and services on campus. And so with that being said, maybe I'll pass over to Patrick to chat about the work permit and after graduation and the benefits. Yeah, thanks, Jordan. So one of the great um, benefits of studying in Canada is regardless of where you are studying, and this includes Lakehead University, full-time international students studying a post-secondary degree program, which is an undergraduate or master's degree, are eligible to work in Canada. This means you can work 20 hours a week during your studies and 40 hours a week during your break periods. So an undergraduate student um, has a four month summer vacation that they're allowed to work 40 hours a week during, as well as our fall and winter reading weeks, which are one week long each, and our Christmas break, which can be between three, uh, two and three weeks, depending on your exam schedule. So all in all, uh, working in Canada is a great way to subsidize your education and international students are allowed to work on or off campus, which I think is a really important factor. And then after graduation, uh, regardless of uh, whether you graduate from an undergrad or graduate program, you are eligible for what's called a postgraduate work permit, which is up to three years and it's an open work permit. So it allows you to stay and work in Canada um, across the country uh, in your field of study or otherwise um, for up to three years. So lots of really good reasons to choose Canada um, between the working during your studies and then the availability to stay in the country and gain that really valuable work experience right after graduation. Awesome. Thanks, Patrick. And next I'll chat about about uh, working on and off campus. So it definitely depends on what you're interested in, maybe what your experience is and the background you bring to a role. Um, but there's plenty of options when you join us here at Lakehead University. And the, the beautiful thing about working on campus is that there are a variety of departments and roles available for you to choose from. And it really provides you a convenient, but also an exciting work environment. I myself, as a student many years ago, worked uh, for this exact same department with an international. I also worked for our undergraduate admissions team here at Lakehead University. So I got a well-rounded experience of different departments at Lakehead and how they operate. Gave me a better understanding of the university and also uh, gave me a few perks for sure, as well as the pay was good. Um, and it secured me a full-time job after the fact. So I was pretty grateful to have that opportunity. And when you join us here at Lakehead University, I hope that you find a, a role either on campus or off campus, depending on where your passions lie and what your experience says about you. Another thing about working while you study and, and not everyone considers uh, the two-sided to the benefits and there's more than just two benefits, of course. 
but on top of earning while well, you study and earning towards that education. So whether you're going to save for that next year's tuition payment or whether you're saving for your living expenses, whatever it might be, uh, there's another benefit and that's adding the Canadian work experience to your resume. And so when you graduate from your Lakehead University degree, you're able to use that experience as well as your degree to show employers that you already have really wide knowledge about both your area of study but also the work environment here in Canada and so I think it's really important and we'll definitely dive into that uh, that topic in a little more with Kristen and Megan today and so with that being said I will happily pass it over to Kristen who's gonna sort of chat us through the uh, career zone on our Thunder Bay campus. Thanks, Jordan. So um, with the Career Zone at Lakehead University, it is a fairly new office. Um, it's part of the Student Success Center, which houses a couple other supports. Um, but the Career Zone opened in January 2020. Um, and we've actually been doing virtual services since March 2020, um, just due to the pandemic. But um, we do offer a lot of supports and services for students. Uh, for the main ones that I do want to talk about are resume and cover letter services, uh, job searching services, interview services, and then our career exploration. Uh, we do offer a lot more, but those are kind of the four main areas that we that we do offer in terms of service. Um, so with resume and, and uh, cover letter services, I'm not gonna go into each specific thing, um, but we do offer a variety of these. So, you know, things from one-on-one -on -one resume appointments to uh, resume tools and, and resources and things like that. Um, with the job searching, we do offer a variety of services as well. So that could help you if you are searching for a job, uh, you know, talking about the last slide with on-campus and off-campus uh, work or, you know, part-time work work after graduation, we offer a variety of supports for, for that area. Uh, interview services as well is something that we offer. So we do use a really awesome tool called Big Interview um, that helps students to navigate and answering interview questions and also practicing mock interviews. Um, and then with our career exploration side, uh, we do offer a lot of support with that as well. So you can book an advising appointment to talk about career pathways. Uh, we have a lot of career tools and things like that. So we do offer quite a, a variety of career supports for students. Awesome. And on that note, I think I would like to sort of touch on that interviewing aspect is many students, of course, are, are familiar with their own home countries, interviewing practices and job hiring practices, which can greatly vary depending on where you're coming from. And so being able to prep for a Canadian interview for a Canadian job hiring process is really important. Kristen, do you have any recommendations or do you have any insight for students that are coming from international locations on why prepping for that interview is an important step in the process? Yeah, for sure. So the, the biggest thing that you can do to be successful in an interview is practice, um, you know, especially if it is a, a fairly new interview style for you. Um, you want to make sure that you're practicing as much as you can and doing a mock interview is, is probably the best way to do that. So that's why we have this tool for, for students. Um, but I would say job searching in general, like coming into Canada, if you are looking to search for jobs, look at what we are offering in terms of support supports for job searching because we want to make sure that you're well prepared before you start job searching. So that would mean like getting your resume looked at, looking at all the different ways you can job search so that way you're not, um, you know, putting in a million applications and then maybe not hearing anything back. We want to make sure we're preparing you before that. So um, all of that is offered on our, our Lakehead website, uh, the Career Zone website, which is just lakeheadu.ca slash career zone. So awesome. And I would I'm, say I'm to really look happy. into those. Yeah, Sorry. <laughs> so I, I was going to say, I'm really happy to hear that it's also being offered virtually during the pandemic. But of course, yeah. when we do return in person, it's a beautiful zone. It's a be beautiful space that you have there. And so it, it's really fortunate that our students can have a place to come together and, and, and learn in this environment. So whether it is those uh, opportunities where you're, you're doing resume practice or resume review, part of me, or career exploration, they have you as a resource to go to and many uh, any one of the other student success advisors in some cases too, but there's also peer support. I know that uh, some of the resume workshopping is done through peer support. Do you want to chat a bit about that and why it's important to have a really proficient resume and, and one that's easily legible to an employer? 
For sure, yeah. So we do offer a lot of resume supports, as I've talked about. Um, one of the things that we do offer is a peer resume review program. Um, so this is something where peers, uh, Lakehead students, are trained to actually do resume reviews for other Lakehead students. Um, this is a really awesome program. It's actually a good opportunity, too, if that's something that maybe you're interested in, in being a part of as a student um, to get that experience. But um, we want to make sure that we have that peer to peer support as well. Uh, with resume, it is extremely important to start looking into building your resume skills early. Um, I work with a variety of students daily and um, you know, I often hear from students that apply for 10, 20 jobs and they come to me and they're like, oh, I'm not hearing back. Um, and then I look at their resume and then I kind of realize that um, you know, the resume could have been adapted to be a little bit better so that way they would have more success in obtaining an, an interview. Um, but the resume is a, is a hugely important document and we want to make sure that you are um, skilled in writing a really good resume. So we offer a lot of supports for that. And I would encourage you to look into resume writing early. So that way, by the time you graduate, you'll feel comfortable with adapting your resume for any job. For sure. And I, I like the mention of the adapting every job and, and making it unique. You want to really highlight the areas or your expertise for each individual job. In some cases, even in your part time job, you might not recognize that your past experience or your skills will really play well into that employer and that that peer to peer resume support, but also just accessing the career zone might help you recognize that exact point, which will then hopefully put you at the top of the pile for the employer, because you certainly have to stand out and make a name for yourself so that you're recognized and, and hopefully hired uh, when you do arrive. On that note, and chatting about sort of and connecting with employers and whatnot, I think networking opportunities and the programs that are involved with that. I know that we have a number of opportunities for Lakehead students to connect with current students as well as alumni. Um, Kristen, I'll pass back to you to dive into that and explore it further. For sure. So networking is a, a huge part of, um, you know, finding opportunities for yourself, job searching, making connections in Canada. Um, there was actually a study done a couple of years ago that said 85% of jobs aren't posted jobs on job banks, and they're actually obtained through networking, which is which is a huge number, right? So we want to make sure that we're providing support to Lakehead students to be able to network and to make these connections. Uh, one of the programs that we do offer with networking is called Lakehead Connect, and this is something that the Lakehead Alumni Office uh, organizes, and with the Career Zone, we do partner with them to advertise it and and help get students um, started with it. So basically this is a program that allows you to uh, connect with Lakehead alumni in all sorts of industries at all sorts of career levels to talk about anything from you know, job opportunities to advice for career pathways or things like that. Uh, we do partner with a couple or organizations in town as well. Uh, one of them, one of the other programs that we help partner with is the connector program. So this is something that allows connections with new students to uh, Thunder Bay or new people to the Thunder Bay area to help them make connections with employers throughout Northwestern Ontario. So that's a really great program as well. Um, and all of the information about these programs is on our website as well. So it's something to, to definitely explore. Um, and the last thing that we do try to encourage a lot with students, especially with the pandemic happening now, is to use and get familiar with LinkedIn. Um, I work with a lot of employers all the time, and I know Megan does too, and a lot of them are using LinkedIn to connect with people because everything is, is virtual now, right? So it's a good opportunity to connect with employers, have these conversations and network to be able to start building these, these relationships. For sure. And on, on top of all of the events that are hosted by the Student Success Center, there's also program specific events as well as faculty specific events that are arranged by other committees and other groups within our campus community. And so uh, these are just a few to mention. So I can speak from experience of being a business graduate from Lincoln University. Um, we had a, a student association within the business group and we had several networking nights where we actually had employers and students come together for one evening where they were going around chatting about future job prospects 
career paths, they were sharing advice, there was some speeches made, it was really uh, an amazing evening from the one that I attended, where I had an opportunity to actually meet some of our marketing agencies here in Thunder Bay, and I had started talking jobs. Um, that wasn't the path I ended up going down because I was able to get a job with Lakehead University, of course, but it was good uh, to know that there were certainly opportunities out there and there was a path for me down the road and the connections that I made at that event still last today and I interact with some of those people even so I really strongly encourage networking in, in any facet no matter what role you're in. Um, there are certainly traditional ideas or uh, thoughts that certain fields of study don't need or networking isn't necessar necessary but we certainly encourage it because we know that there's a really strong power to knowing people. And also as Megan mentioned with that, or pardon me, as Chris mentioned with that study, uh, that a vast majority of jobs are actually found through networking and not posted on job banks. You really want to get in the know with essentially when you're at Lakehead. And so with that being said, I'll chat about, uh, I'll, I'll pass it over to both of you again to chat about events and workshops. And this more closely ties into career fairs and securing those jobs. Yeah, so we do offer a lot of events and workshops that are career related. Um, the picture you're seeing now is, is a picture from uh, one of our career fairs. So every year we do offer four career fairs that have been in person uh, apart from last year. Um, and what we do is we offer either specialized career fairs or general career fairs. So typically we offer an education fair for teacher candidates, uh, an engineering fair that's specific to engineering students. And and then we offer two other career fairs throughout the year. One is for career and summer jobs. Uh, and one is a general fair for all employers as well. So we always have a large number of employers on campus to network with you in person. Um, so these are really, really great events. We held them virtually last year and this past semester as well, the winter term. Um, and those have also worked out great to be able to network in a virtual booth with employers. Um, so those are things that I would definitely recommend looking at as well. The other thing that we offer yearly, and we've done this for the past three years, um, um, we have a, a partnership with the Canada Revenue Agency, and we offer a recruitment day with them. They come to Lakehead every year to recruit students from business and computer science. Um, sometimes they do branch out to other areas, but those are kind of the two main areas, and that's always a really successful event. They always have a ton of job op opportunities and things like that. Um, so that's something that you can check out as well. And then with the workshops in general, the Career Zone does offer workshops regularly, um, whether it's just us putting it on and talking about things ourselves, or we're bringing in guest speakers. So we recently had a, a communication specialist come in and do a virtual workshop about networking and uh, professional communication. So we do offer things like that regularly, uh, whether it be virtual or in person. So those are kind of a, a variety of things that we offer. Awesome. And, and maybe we'll pass over to May to chat a bit about some of the events and workshops that are hosted through the, the co-op and employer relations side of the Student Success Centre. Thanks, Jordan. Um, yeah, so for the co-op program, we do encourage a lot of the career zone programming. So a lot of the events and workshops that uh, Kristen puts on through the career zone, I often will send reminders and that sort of thing for students to attend those sort of things to kind of help with their uh, skills building and pre preparing for uh, the job search and that sort of thing for the co-op program. However, I do offer some separate programming for um, other students, like I'll do a resume refresher with uh, students, a workshop for that. And then I also do co-op information sessions. So once you come to campus, um, I do do, first six weeks of each term, a co-op information session each week for different programs. So that's something to take advantage of. And um, it, we will probably post it on our social media or send it out to you uh, via email, but those are something you can take advantage of to learn more about the co-op program. And then also there is co-op and will week that actually just passed in March. Um, the second week of March, we put on a bunch of events and um, feature some of our co-op students throughout the week. Uh, some of the events included an alumni speaker series, so connecting students with alumni in their field to help with their building their network. And then we also had some skills building workshops 
and co-op information sessions that week as well. And some other uh, workshops in terms of building your virtual network and your how to communicate virtually and that sort of thing. So a lot of different uh, events and workshops uh, for co-op students as well. Awesome. So it's good to hear that there's plenty of opportunities, obviously, for students who are both interested in, in gaining that part time or that summer employment, potentially planning for that career after upon graduation or simply interested in the co-op program. There's plenty of options and opportunities to get involved, learn more. I'm really excited that you mentioned, Megan, that there are those first six weeks that are essentially introductions and information sessions for each program. And so with that being said, uh, for our students that will be joining us this fall, uh, keep that in mind and mark it down in your calendars. If you're unsure about co-op, if you didn't apply to the co-op program necessarily from the outset of your application, do not worry about that. You, can, you are still fully eligible typically to join the co-op program. Um, and it doesn't start in the first year or the first semester of your Lakehead University studies, so you don't need to rush into anything. Um, if you are going into a master's, you should certainly prep for it because it will start sooner than later. Uh, for undergrad, though, it does take uh, after the first year, if I am not, not mistaken, if not the second year, that you would become eligible to join that program. But we'll dive into it in just a second. So with that being said, um, we'll, we'll transfer over to the next slide and we'll chat about cooperative education. So for those of who, you who are not familiar with what co-op, or that's what our nickname is for, the short form for it is, um, it is a paid work experience within your program. So it's closely related to your studies. It is approved by your chair or your supervisor. So they understand that you'll actually be gaining really beneficial work experience and also uh, job preparation experience uh, in the field. So whether or not you're in business, maybe you're in engineering, maybe you're in a science program and you're looking to get relevant experience in the work environment, this is the perfect opportunity to be both awarded for earning while you learn, as we like to say, so you're getting paid while you're learning in the work field, um, but also it looks great. It simply looks great on a resume and uh, employers certainly look, it out, look it out for that. So I'll pass over to Megan to start chatting about, uh, and then we'll go into the more specific details about the whole offering. Thanks, Jordan. Um, yeah, so the co-op program at Lakehead, uh, it's really great. There's a lot of benefits um, doing a co-op option with your program. Um, you can do up to 16 months of work terms depending on your program. For undergraduate, it's usually up to 16 months. Um, for graduate, it's eight months, two terms. So you have, uh, it just depends on the program and you'd have to check your academic calendar um, requirements in order to see what the length is for that, but it just differs by program, as well as you can visit the, I'm just going to put it in the chat so everyone has it, but the lake, uh, the co-op website. Okay, for sure. Perfect. Okay. So yeah, and then it is paid work experience. So you're getting paid to do those work terms from the employer. Um, so you're able to offset the cost of your education during your work experience and you're applying what you're learning throughout your studies as well, right? So the average around is 18 to $22 an hour Canadian. So that's pretty good. Um, some of our master's programs, our graduate programs get paid a little more just because of um, more experience. So it is really great to be able to have that opportunity to actually get a paid work experience throughout, um, throughout your degree, right? And it is integrated into your program. So I just wanna make it clear that you do have a set um, schedule or work term sequence, we call it, where you do your co-op and you do have to return to academic studies. So you aren't um, just completing your co-op at the end of your degree or um, you know, only in the summer or something like that. It has to be integrated within your studies um, in the fall and winter as well. Um, and yeah, we have over 140 national and international partners. So we have a lot of different, um, thanks Jordan. Uh, yeah, a lot of different employer partners. So these are just some of the um, employers that hire co-op students. Uh, we actually have a list on the co-op website as well, uh, what employers have hired in certain terms. So you can check that out um, on the co-op website. Um, Something yeah, I so like really you mentioned good. here, Megan, is that although we have 
uh, historical partners, so partners that we, we typically see our co-op students going to, as well as where we've seen them go to in the past or where it's quite popular uh, among the students. It's not limited to the list that we have. If there is a co-op experience at an employer that you are absolutely passionate about, you're interested in learning more, you, you would like to apply, we're more than happy to assist in that process and, and hopefully helping you secure that job. Um, we certainly know people would like to do international co-ops as well. And so on that note, uh, are students eligible to go uh, and, and do that paid work term experience in say for example the united states if they wish yeah that's a really great question so at the moment we we are not allowing this just because of the pandemic but in normal circumstances we do allow our students to do international um, co-op work terms so in the united states or whether it be um germany we've had students go to germany we have partnerships with other universities um um, Bremen University as well to do for co-op students to do work terms internationally, which is really awesome. Um, so we do offer that opportunity. Awesome. And, and to our audience, I want to welcome another panelist, a current student in the mechanical engineering program, Dong Woo Kim, uh, who also participated in the co-op program uh, at Lakehead University and worked with Ontario Power Generation. Uh, in just a moment, we'll interview him and we'll ask him about his experience in the co-op program. But first, I'll let Megan chat about the programs that offer co-op, which is also listed on your screen there, folks. Yeah, so these are the programs that offer co-op currently at Lakehead. Um, and I just want to make it clear that uh, our programs are an option. So someone asked in the question, the Q&A, whether our co-ops are guaranteed. So it's not guaranteed. So make sure you keep that in mind that you are to get a co-op. However, we offer a lot of supports when during your job search. So we have the co-op job bank. We have um, a co-op job spreadsheet where I have a spreadsheet where I'm always doing job searches for the students and putting them in. And that's shared with everyone, as well as all the skills building. So resume workshops, um, interview skills, job searching skills, advising appointments to help you with your job search. So we don't just leave you to just job search on your own. We support you through the whole process. Um, however, just make sure that you're aware that it's not guaranteed to have a co-op um, and it doesn't affect your graduation if you don't secure a co-op. And that's good to remember as well, because it is an option for your program. Um, if you aren't able to obtain co-op, that's OK. You switch into a different into the non-co-op option. So just keep that in mind as well. Um, but these are some of the the programs that we have at Lakehead. As you can see, there's a lot. Um, there's some in Aurelia. If we have any students interested in Aurelia, we do have some business programs um, that offer co-op at the Aurelia campus, uh, as well as our LU, uh, Lakehead uh, Georgian partnership as well. So through the computer science and the electrical engineering program, we have co-op options too, and our graduate programs uh, as well. So we have a few graduate programs that offer co-op um, as well. There's one program specifically I like to highlight typically at this point is kinesiology because uh, Lakehead University is one of the few universities in Canada offer a paid cooperative education experience within that program. Um, if you're interested in kinesiology, if you're interested in learning more about kinesiology, you can certainly head over to our website and, and check that out. If you already know about kinesiology, maybe you've already applied, I would highly recommend the co-op program and, and looking into that opportunity because it really does set you apart from uh, fellow graduates within that field of study. And on that note, I'm going to introduce uh, Dongu Kim, who is a current student here at Lakehead University, and I'll ask him some questions about his co-op experience with the Ontario Power Generation. So thank you for joining us today. Um, my first question uh, about your co-op experience and then just asking you to share your insight. In your opinion, what was your most impactful experience within the co-op program at OPG? Oh, yeah. Good morning, everyone. So uh, the most popular experience is uh, how uh, we can learn the how the real field work. So we have like a chance to go. I, I, actually, for me, I, I have chance to go to the down to the plant like during the, my experience. And then I can I can have chance to work as the engineer. So I can run like a lot of the experience from the engineers. So that's the popular experience for the core program. 
Yeah, for sure. So uh, it sounds like we're working directly with engineers in the field and learning yeah. some of their techniques and knowledge, but also just sharing in that experience in the work environment was an important aspect of the call program for you. Um, speaking yeah. about your engineering experience and, and being a Lakehead student, were you able to use the, the skills and knowledge that you learned in your program of mechanical engineering in your co-op when you actually joined the workforce? I was I was working at the project team, and then uh, actually everything is new because it is like a nuclear plant. So, uh, but the uh, but the Beijing knowledge is also the same. Uh, the Beijing knowledge what I learned in like at the university is the same. So I can easily learn the like new new knowledge from the OPG. So this this is the good thing for the what is that? <laughs> so yeah, for mechanical engineering. So. For yes, sure, yes. just having that foundational knowledge allowed you to build on what OPG provided in their training and in their guidance, which of course uh, is a beautiful segue into my next question about uh, whether or not you feel your co-op experience and, and the skills that you learned as well as the experience itself will help prepare you in your future career hunt or potentially uh, maybe in that next level of study, whether you plan to go to a graduate level program. So as I mentioned in before, so I can work as the engineer, and then so I I learned like how to how to how to work the engineer how to how how they how and they are working it in the field, and then I learned like engineer knowledge from there, and then also I I I gave I got the reference from the engineer, so these 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 knowledge and the reference can help me to like the future, then future yeah, careers. So that awesome. is the, yeah. And my final question for you, uh, unless of course a student has a question, then we'll certainly have you join and, and chat about that. But my final question, just overall with the co-op experience, what was your favorite aspect of the entire experience? I, I don't much have like any, like any idea about this question, but the good thing of the co-op program is the international student can get the work permit from the Canada government. So for if if you are an international student, you need to work a permit to for for working working during the vacation. But uh, but the, uh, the good thing is the co program gave me the work permit, so I can work at the during the vacation and then the winter term. So there's this the there's the yeah good good aspect from the co program as well. For sure, and of course, with that being said, I would be remiss not to mention that. Uh, when, when students are preparing for the co-op, whether they need that additional co-op work permit with the Canadian government, we do have an in-house immigration advisor. Her name is Jennifer Hay, and she'll actually help guide students if they, if they need help applying for their co-op work permit. They, she can absolutely help you in that, uh, in that navigation of applying for it and securing it so that you're ready to join the workforce for your co-op term. And with that being said, I'll move into the question period. So we are um, just at 9.38 here in Thunder Bay. Um, and so with that being said, we have about 20 minutes left on today's session. I know that we've had many questions already answered behind the scenes in the webinar, uh, but I'll go over to our Q&A and I'll, I'll maybe pass it over to some of our specialists. So the first question we have is from Sohan. It says, good morning, I would like to know about it that there are co-ops guaranteed. Uh, what are a few of the companies that employ us after graduation? So I know Megan already touched on the first part, but if she wants to elaborate a little bit further or reiterate that, and then she can also chat about some of the companies where we've seen our graduates go. Yeah, so we, we actually have this on the co-op website, so you can check out after this, but for this year, we've had quite a few different employers. Um, I'm just looking on the website here because <laughs> I don't know off the top of my head, but uh, we do have a lot of great employers like local OPG, um, Enbridge Gas, Hatch Engineering um, has been some great employers for engineering. It depends on the program, um, what you're looking at, uh, kind of knowing what employers uh, hire from. Um, we also have Tetra Tech, a lot of different engineering local employers. 
Uh, and then for computer science, we've had BlackBerry hire for students, um, CGI, RBC hires a lot of, um, of our co-op students. Uh, the Ministry of Education hires um, every term almost for our computer science program, TD Bank, uh, a lot of different great uh, employers that are well known hiring our students. So it's really great. St. Joseph's, it's a local hospital here in Thunder Bay, hires kinesiology students. Um, Indigenous Services Canada, some government jobs as well, uh, as well as our uh, local Lakehead department. So some Lakehead departments will hire students as well, which is really great. Yes, I actually was fortunate enough to have a co-op student working with me. Um, the student that I had is a Master's of Arts and Economics student, and so she was able to help me in my role analyze and more intently look in and do data analysis of our participation on the webinars, our social media analytics, all that sort of stuff. So it was really interesting to see that her passion actually lies within that creative realm of digital marketing and marketing in general, but she was able to apply her economics experience and knowledge from her course uh, in, in her co-op program. And so with that being said, um, the next question is a nice segue into just chatting about working in Thunder Bay, it says, if I study in Thunder Bay, does that mean I am likely to get a job in Thunder Bay itself? Or is it too ambitious to aim for other cities in Ontario? And so with that being said, I think Kristen, you could add to this as well, but I'll start off in saying that although you have a degree from Lakehead University, whether you graduate from our Thunder Bay campus or Aurelia campus, maybe you've done our Lakehead Georgian partnership program, uh, it's not going to lock you down or tie you to one of our cities necessarily. You'll certainly make uh, a vast networking connection here, hopefully. But at the same time, we've seen our students in many cases go across Canada, some of our major city centers, go to smaller cities even, they've gone international. So we have students working all over the world essentially and, and shooting for any other city in Ontario or any other city in Canada is by no means too ambitious. Your Lakehead degree and your experience, we are a well-known university in Canada. And uh, with that being said, employers recognize us uh, on those resumes and CVs. Kristen, did you have anything to add to that or about that journey and clear career exploration? Yeah, I, I agree with everything that you said, Jordan. It, it definitely doesn't limit you to Thunder Bay, but yeah, I, I do agree that studying in Thunder Bay gives you the opportunity to build networks in Thunder Bay. Um, so throughout those you know, years that you are studying, that should be the time that you are networking as well. It shouldn't be saved to the end of the degree in order to make the most of it. But um, studying at Lakehead certainly does not limit you to just Thunder Bay. Uh, I find when I talk to students, a lot of them do want to stay in Thunder Bay after just because they they end up really liking it here. They've made those connections, um, things like that. But personally, I um, you know, studying internet or studying in, in Thunder Bay and then even working internationally as an option. Um, I did that myself. I moved to England for three years after studying at Lakehead. So um, I would say that it's, it's open to anything really, um, but you are likely to make connections in Thunder Bay to hopefully open up job opportunities if you are taking advantage of that networking throughout your study. Awesome. So another question we have is from Abdul. It says, during co-op, does the student need to pay a complete term tuition fee or just a co-op fee? And so I'll pass this one over to Megan to uh, elaborate on a bit more. Yeah, so there is a co-op fee. That's a really great question. Um, there are a few fees that are required during the co-op process. So I'll, I'll just answer um, uh, for that as well. So when you go to apply for co-op, there is an application process. So you're not just automatically um, enrolled into co-op. Even if you are in the co-op option, you do have to apply. You have to meet uh, specific mark requirements. Uh, so the eligibility guide is actually on the co-op website as well. So you can check that out. Um, but when you go to apply, there is a $30 fee to apply and is non-refundable. So just keep that in mind uh, as one of the fees. And then after that, uh, there is a co-op participation fee. So that is applied to your student account once you secure employment. So you, you aren't charged that fee even if you don't secure employment. It's only if you actually do. So that fee there is um, a co-op participation 
tuition fee and that's all you're charged during those terms. So you aren't paying your tuition on top of the co-op fee during that time. Um, if you are on OSAP or anything like that, it gets deferred. Um, but otherwise, yeah, you're not being having to pay the tuition fees along with your participation fee. Um, it's roughly six, I think it's 650 now plus um, any ancillary fees for the participation fee, that's the full amount. So that's the fee you pay on your first work term. And then any consecutive work terms with the same employer, you pay half that amount for the, the rest of the terms. So it ends up being half that amount. Say if you, for example, you do a four term co-op, you would pay that full amount in the first term and then half that amount for the rest, the three remaining terms. So that's how the, the co-op fee works. Awesome. Yeah. So it, it's certainly equitable for students that if they're paying tuition fees uh, and then they're moving into a co-op, um, the, the price difference is significant, of course. And then with that being said, because they're earning while they learn, um, they can be using that money to pay off uh, some of their living expenses or they can start saving for their final couple semesters uh, for regular tuition costs. Another question we have from Krishal, it says, how many hours per week can we work during co-op? So I'll pass that one over maybe to Megan. And if Patrick, you want to follow up, if you have something to add with that. Yeah, so that's a really great question. Uh, so there is a minimum requirement per term. So it's 420 hours per work term. So you have to meet that minimum requirement. However, you can do more than that. It doesn't have to be like near that amount or that's just the minimum amount that you have to have for each work term, which usually works out to 12 weeks at 35 hours per week. So as long as you meet that, um, you could, that's fine for a co-op work term. And the co-op term, I guess I should go into detail just for others. So for our summer, spring, summer term, it's May 1st to um, September for, or end of August, August 31st. So that's one summer term. And then the fall term is September 1st to end of December. And then the winter term is January 1st to end of April. So those are our terms. So you have to meet those hours within those terms for each, um, each one that you have. For sure. And then I, on top of that, I think the student also might want to know, while you're completing your co-op, you are eligible to technically work a part-time job and work additional hours. Um, as you are on an academic break at that point, you can work full-time hours as a full-time international student. Um, however, of course, our words of encouragement are to ensure that you are doing as much as you can to be absolutely successful in the co-op program and, and make a good impression on your employer. We have seen in many cases students will actually gain full-time employment, summer employment from their co-op when their term is done. And so we, we certainly encourage you to have a positive relationship with your employer and you put your best foot forward, your best effort forward. Um, but if you're still looking to maintain another part-time job, you're certainly eligible to do that. Um, and that's a good segue into one of my next questions. It, it's a simple question. What are the job opportunities in general in Thunder Bay? And so th this is a question from Sai, and thank you, Sai. Um, in general, Jobs do vary for our university students. So whether they're looking to work in the restaurant industry, whether they're looking to actually cook in the kitchen, be a line cook, dishwasher, prep cook, all that sort of stuff, or they're looking to serve or bartend potentially. Um, those are certainly popular options among uh, our students in the university, but also there's plenty of administrative roles in Thunder Bay. And so it really, I think it, it best suits your experience. And that's what we always encourage. Uh, if you have certain or particular experience in a certain field and you're passionate about that field still, we would encourage you to pursue a job in that area. And so if you're coming from another country and you've been a server before, for example, you may wish to also uh, serve here in Thunder Bay. If you're wishing to serve at a bar and you have uh, liquor sales, you do have to go an extra step and secure a smart serve is what we call it. So it just ensures that you're doing proper, proper practices and protocols. Um, and then maybe I'll pass it over to Kristen and, and she can add on to that as well. 
Yeah, thanks, Jordan. I just wanted to add a point about um, jobs after graduation in Thunder Bay too. Uh, but like Jordan said, there's there's a ton of opportunities for student jobs in Thunder Bay. Um, but in case anyone's wondering about jobs after graduation, I do want to give you a, a little piece of advice. Um, so if you're searching for jobs in Thunder Bay after graduation, try to think outside the box a little bit. Um, there's a lot of jobs available for graduates, um, but sometimes it just takes thinking about companies that um, might not necessarily seem related to your program. Um, so for example, say you're a computer science student and you're graduating and you know, you're looking at jobs with just IT companies. Um, there's actually a lot of jobs in Thunder Bay for IT graduates and you know things like that where it wouldn't necessarily just be with an IT company it could be with a company that's that's you know anything really um so when students ask me that question a lot like what jobs can I get after graduation I often want them to think about that as well because there are a lot of jobs um just try not to limit yourself to excuse me to the companies that you think are just related to your program yeah, and I, I've actually touched on this topic before. We recently hosted a session with, with computer science, and that was a, a, a topic that came up for certainly where we discussed how the traditional view of a computer science graduate is that you would move into a IT company or a technology-focused company, whereas uh, computer science and that specialization really is regarded quite highly among the entire industry of, of job hiring, essentially, because no matter what industry you're in, whether you're in a financial institution, whether you're a retailer or a merchandiser, there's always a need for computer science and students that understand programming and IT in general. And so, like Kristen mentioned, don't limit yourself or a North American phrase, don't pigeonhole yourself into one area that you think that you should be going into. And that also kind of touches back on what we've discussed in networking and building those connections. Another question we have is from Molet. It says, what opportunities do MBA students have? And so, Megan, correct me if I'm wrong, MBA does not offer a cooperative education experience. No, they don't. Only okay. through the engineering program. So this is a little different. So you have to be in the under, undergraduate engineering program and you could have a combination like it's a program that um, is in combination with the MBA program, but they have to complete the undergraduate engineering and then they go into the MBA program and that has a co-op option in there. Oh, okay, yes, but not I'm just the MBA program. Yeah. yeah. So for students that are interested in doing the the bachelor's of engineering degree as well as an MBA in five years, which is a really key Lakehead advantage that we like to talk about, um, co-op is certainly an option for you to be looking for and interested in. Um, if you were just doing the MBA program, there are certainly experiential learning opportunities and plenty of hands-on case studies that are relevant to today's work. Uh, and, and industry essentially, but you won't necessarily have a job placement within the MBA program. Um, if you have any more questions about that program, you can certainly head back to our YouTube channel. We just recently hosted uh, some of our faculty from the business faculty, and they chatted more about MBA and the offerings within that program. Another question we have is from Felipe. It says, hello, I'm Felipe from Brazil. I have a bachelor in chemical engineering in my country already, but I have no experience, only the internship. Am I able to apply to co-op in order to get work experience? And so correct me if I'm wrong, Megan, does chemical engineering offer a co-op at the graduate level? Yes, they do. Awesome. So for this student, for Felipe, although they don't have uh, work experience in their home country if they're admitted into the the chemical engineer at the graduate level could they potentially do a co-op yeah so if they end up doing the masters in chemical engineering they can definitely do a co-op through that program if they join yeah and so i think the important message for all of our viewers is that uh, if you're interested in doing a co-op and you're admitted into the program, um, th there's no really relevant experience necessary to participate in the co-op. The only requirements of the co-op program are, of course, that you're you're in it, uh, you're in that program, it offers it, but also you meet the admission requirements. So there is, uh, like you said, online resources to explain in further detail what criteria you do need to satisfy in order to participate. 
So I'm just filtering through some questions here. Um, let me read through them here. So this one is, uh, it says, good evening, I have applied for a master's in computer science. I hope there are six terms uh, during my course of two years. If I get a call program, should I pay only for four terms of tuition to the university? So that's a really good question. It speaks more closely to uh, when you're actually completing academic courses with the university. And so uh, we know that the computer science program can be structured to be completed within six terms or so a full two years of academic study. If you're doing the co-op term, the, the term is actually put in the middle of those two years. And so it's an additional amount of time. So you will still pay the full six terms if that's how long it takes you to complete the academic portion. Um, but like Megan mentioned, there is a co-op participation fee um, for the first term that you're with an employer. And if you stick with that employer for the second term, there's a smaller fee that's involved with that on top of additional fees, including ancillary fees that you do pay to be a student at Lakehead University that go to some of the supports and services that we offer. So I'm just reading through some more questions. Do we need to study and give exams during co-op? That's a good question. I'll pass it over to Megan, maybe to speak whether or not students are able to co complete some academic courses or a few courses here and there. Yeah, that's a really great question. And um, it actually came up earlier that I, I wanted to touch on this. So that's awesome. Um, so you can do uh, up to one FCE but it needs to be approved by your faculty. So you can do a course while you're doing your co-op, but you need to have that approval. Some faculties are a little hesitant. They want you to focus on your co-op experience. However, that is an option uh, if you wanted to see if your faculty would allow that, um, but you aren't doing full-time studies. So you're, doing, you're just doing your co-op work experience. Um, you're not doing any exams or studying if you don't opt to take um, that one FC. You do have, sorry, I just want to touch though, based on the work term deliverables. So you do actually have to do a report during the co-op work term. So there is the requirement to do um, report on your experience so that faculty can review that. And there is, um, and I know probably some of you are thinking this as well, is there marks associated with co-op? So there is no percentage on the co-op work term work terms, but there is a pass or fail. So you need to complete all the work term deliverables, which will be communicated to you throughout the process. But one of those is the work term report and the employer evaluation form at the end of each term. So just be mindful of that. You need to complete that. Um, but yeah, that's basically, there's no exam for the co-op work experience. It's just completing um, that report and then having your faculty review your experience. Awesome. So another question we have is from, from Bijan. It says, I'm going to study a master's of electrical and computer engineering, but I am a part-time English teacher. Is it possible to find a job as a teacher in the university's language center during my education? So the English language center is actually a part of uh, our unit here at Lakehead International. Um, I can't speak for the English Language Center and whether they'd be able to hire you specifically. They actually do offer current uh, student positions through uh, some of the work programs that are already available. Those are typically administrative positions, but I would highly recommend that you reach out to our English Language Center and explore that option to see whether or not they would be interested in, in potentially having you on as a part-time teacher, or if you were interested in working as an administrative student assistant, you could potentially also offer some additional English preparatory courses or offerings uh, I think that would be awesome to do. I'll pass it over to Patrick, who's going to answer some questions live, and then uh, just acknowledging the time, we'll have to wrap it up after the next few questions. Yeah, thanks, Jordan. Just a couple of quick questions. Um, someone wants to know the average years you'll be in university. So generally, undergraduate programs are four years in length. Master's degrees are two years in length. Do keep in mind that if you do take a co-op work term, as we've talked about today, or work terms, it does extend your degree essentially for those terms. Um, so you have to budget that into your plan. Um, but yeah, that's it's a four years undergraduate, two years for the master's. And then another more specific question about the taking co-op with engineering, making it a five-year engineering program essentially, um, 
the postgraduate work permit starts after the completion of the degree? The answer to that is yes. Your post, you don't, you cannot apply for your postgraduate work uh, permit until you graduate from your program, which means the completion of all your academic requirements. And if you are doing your co-op, obviously the completion of your co-op as well. So it would not start until after you've applied for it, which is not until after graduation. So that's my two quick questions, Jordan, and I'll pass it back to you. Awesome, thank you. I know that uh, Megan and Patrick are answering some more questions behind the scenes. In the meantime, though, I uh, want to remind our viewers to stay connected with us and follow us on our social media channels. I know I've already mentioned this, but you can find us at uh, Lakehead International on Facebook and Instagram. You can head over to our YouTube, which is just Lakehead University. We have two playlists dedicated to international students, both Lakehead International and Lakehead International Lives. Uh, Lakehead International Lives is the playlist where all of our webinars that are recorded are uploaded after the fact for your viewing. So whether or not maybe you had to head out early, maybe you join late, you can watch it from the beginning to end. If you want to watch it a second, a third, a fourth, a fifth time, no worries. Um, we hope that today's session was really informational and beneficial for you in preparing for your studies here at Lakehead University. One final reminder, I certainly encourage everyone on today's session to take a virtual campus tour. If you head over to lakehead.ca forward slash tours, you can explore either Aurelia or Thunder Bay. You can check out our facilities, our residents, our campuses in general, and the beautiful nature that surrounds our campuses. Um, and hopefully once you check those out, you'll also be sold on Lakehead University. And with that being said, I wanna thank everyone for joining us. Thank you to uh, my special guests, Megan, Kristen, Dongug. Uh, it's been a pleasure to host you and thank you for Patrick in helping co-host today's session and answering questions. Thank you to our audience for asking so many questions and keeping us engaged. It's been a really great session. It's really exciting to see so many questions and so much interest in all of these opportunities that we have to offer. Hopefully we'll see you at the next one. This Wednesday we'll be meeting up with biology and then next Tuesday we'll be chatting about study permits and applying for those. I know that was a popular question on today's session. So with that, I'll end it there and say thanks again for joining us folks. Thank you for checking out today's video. If you have any questions, you can always comment below. Stay connected and follow us on our social media channels to stay informed about upcoming webinars and get an insider sneak peek of Lakehead University. See you next time.